Hi, this is Godfrey, your trusted mentor, coach, and um, trainer for the Candidate Fast Track system. We helped candidate engineers, technologists, and technicians to successfully complete TERs, TEOs, and engineering report within six weeks without confusion and wasting time. What you see on the screen is our Candidate Fast Track system program that we have developed two years ago, uh, this program gives you all the steps that you need in order to prepare and submit your reports to EXA for professional registration. So we've got nine steps that we take you through in all these steps and I will show you the path that you need to follow. So first is position, we understand where you are in terms of your qualification. The second one is training so that we can see and understand what kind of training that you have and we can advise you on how to close the gaps. Number three is the pathway. You know what category of uh, EXA registration you want to take. And then the next one is the report structure. What structure and how to structure your report in order to write them to meet EXA's requirements. And then step number five is the alignment process where we train you, show you, guide you on how to prepare and write your 11 outcomes so that you are able to meet EXA's um, outcome and requirements. And step number six is then we show you how to write those reports, the content, the details, and the specifics that are required inside the report. Then step number seven is the report assessment, where we assess your report and give you the feedback based on the content of your report, just to make sure that you are able to meet those outcome. And then the next stage is report submission. Then we guide you to show you how do you submit, what you need to submit with your full application to EXA. And the last, once you have submitted, EXA has done the assessment, reviewing, moderation of your report, then you are invited to the interview. We are, again, help you to put together your presentation slides and then do a mock um, interview preparation with you just to help you to prepare your, so that when you go to the interview, you can go there and uh, actually um, defend your application form to access. So those are the nine steps that we go through to assist you. So these are some of the testimonials and recommendations we had from our previous uh, candidates that came through our candidate fast track program where we help them. You can see the testimonies, you can read what they say and what we just say, this is real people, these are real results. If you want to see more, you can go to this link in, and, and link with us on LinkedIn and you can see more of the testimonies that we received from of our clients. These are just some of them. You know, we've got Monley, he's got a GCC, he worked through with us and we coached, trained um, and mentored him on how to use, prepare his uh, application form to EXA. Uh, we've got Ivan, this is actually from Zim and he's also got registered. We've got Busi and uh, we've got Tabo Baba. And we've got uh, uh, Isikwala, uh, we've got Nkosana. So these are some of the guys that uh, worked with us uh, and they've given us a testimony to say the candidate fast track system, it works. I like what Tabo says is the system really works and saves a lot of time. So this is the system that we've created, you know, this one. These guys, they followed this system, they went through this system and they were able to register with EXA. Now today I just want to share on this video outcome number four, how to manage your engineering activities. These are just simple um, um, ideas that are um, on a weekly basis creating uh, this kind of video just to share with you. And you'll find this information on my YouTube. If you go to Godfrey Mongwe on my YouTube, um, you'll find uh, most of the free content that you can indulge yourself in. And then actually prepare yourself uh, so that you know how to, you know, approach uh, your EXA application process when you are ready to do so. So I'm just giving you some few ideas that you can think around. So on managing ex engineering activities, the first thing that is important is to identify your team. You know, who are the people that are going to do some of the activities that are um, you know, give, you are giving input to them and they are giving input to you. So identify responsibilities of each team member to carry out project work packages and manage resources based on their availability. 
controlled by the work breakout structure and scheduled to meet the deadline. So when we are working on a project, we work with a team and we need to know that at a certain point in a project, we'll need certain resources. Therefore, we need to do a plan. We need to schedule to say, by this time uh, of the project, I'll need a crane on site. By this time of the project, I will need a welder on site. So it's important that you plan those things. So that's part of managing engineering activities. Secondly, is to develop a process or implement your company's quality process and procedures. Quality and safety, quality, safety, and environmental management are controlled by checklists and procedures to complete engineering work or project. Okay, so part of managing the engineering activities on a project, you know, is to implement quality, is to implement safety and environmental management, where we use checklists, we use procedures that are, you know, uh, uh, in line with uh, what we are doing on a project. So that's some of the tools that you need to apply in order to make sure that you manage these activities so that you get the outcome that is required by your client. The third thing is to organize and arrange project meetings, progress reporting, lead, influence, and persuade project teams, suppliers, and vendors to deliver engineering work or project on time. Right? You need personal resources. You need human beings on site. You need human resources. You know, you arrange meetings with them so that you can discuss the activities of the project. We'll, uh, when we go to the next um, slide, you'll see some of those activities where you, you have meetings with suppliers, you have meetings with vendors. That's part of managing engineering activities. And the next one is project. Plan the project scope, the budget, the time, the quality, the resources and risk control. Check and monitor engineering or project work. That's part of managing activities. You know, you have the plan for the scope. What kind of work are we going to do? You've got the plan for the budget. How much are we going to spend? The time, how long is going to take us to complete this work or the activity? The quality, what are the quality requirements that we need to um, adhere and meet in order to produce a correct outcome for the client? You need to check and monitor those things on a weekly basis, some on the a daily basis, some on a monthly basis. That's all part of managing engineering activities. And the last one is team leaders or members, supervise appointed subcontractors, the supervised vendors, suppliers, and have professional and business relationship to achieve engineering work. So you also need people that are responsible for specific uh, outcome on a project. So you as a lead engineer, lead technologist, or lead technician or senior technician, as you manage these activities, you manage them through other resources on a project. So you need to have supervisors on site if you're working on a big construction project or on a big consulting work where you're doing designs and, and things like that. So all these activities are part of managing engineering work. Okay, these are the tools that you're going to work. Obviously, these are the uh, 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 plans that you need to have in place. You know, you need to have a scope plan scope management plan, you need to have time management plan, you need to have a budget plan, you need to have a risk plan, resource plan, and quality. These are the things that you manage, all right, as, 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 as an engineer or as a technologist or as a, as a technician in a project. And then you use the tools, you use the progress report, you know, that's reporting to say, uh, last week, this is what we completed, this week, this is what we are planning to complete, and then in the future, these are the things we will be focusing on. So your progress report needs to give the, 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 the roundup of all these activities. Okay, your process flow, what are the, your process flow, what are the activities that you need to do from step one to step two? The work breakdown structure, this gives you a nice, if it's a scope of work, how does your scope is divided? For example, in a construction project, you know, we've got a scope for mechanical, we've got scope for civil, we've got scope for electrical, and we've got scope for structure, and we've got scope for many packages that we, we need to put in place in a project. So the work breakdown structure helps you to, to manage that. It's a tool that we use uh, in a project or in an engineering activity to manage our project. We also have the site team, like I've mentioned, your supervisors, uh, artisans, welders, uh, suppliers of materials, 
you know, some subcontractors coming to do electrical work, some are coming to do some civil work, some are coming to do some structural work. So those are the all tools that we need to manage engineering activities on a project. Uh, quality control plan, you know, so that we say for this activity, these are the things we need to check according to these regulations or according to this specification to make sure we produce a proper quality outcome for the client. And the other important tool is a Gantt chart. You know, uh, we use Microsoft uh, project um, planning uh, software where we input all the activities in that software. We schedule the dates, we schedule the resources, the hours we're going to spend, the money that we're going to spend on certain activities. And this uh, software helps us now to schedule our time to say the activity will start at this date and finish at this date and we track it. And then we are able to share those information with the clients so that we're able to put the client's mind at ease to say the project is on schedule. We know how much we spend. We know how much resources we need in terms of equipment to complete or to execute that particular activities. We know how many people we need in that project so that we don't overclaim, you know, uh, 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 to, to the from, from the client. So that helps a lot to use this tool. So it's important. So all of these tools and, 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 and activities, these are the things that we use to manage engineering activities on a project or on a particular engineering activity. So I hope this will help you. These are just some of the uh, tips that I, I give out that I do as I continue to help some of the um, candidates on, on my program, questions that I receive. So I create this video so that I can help people to understand these um, outcomes properly so that when they submit their report, the report is uh, covering and meeting all the requirements in order to get professional registration. Lastly, if you want to know more, uh, you can go to this link. This is a recorded webinar that I did uh, last year where I go into details to show you what to prepare, what to look for, you know, and how to go about preparing your registration report. So this is just uh, the information, the content that I give out for free. Uh, you find it on my uh, YouTube uh, channel where you can get more of this free information or content that I create on a weekly basis to help you to become successful without feeling overwhelmed or stressful and without wasting time. I will see you in the next program. Cheers.